Hey, what's going on team? It's Ricky with Tackled Solutions. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you on why if I aim to make 1% a day, uh, why am I not a trillionaire? Uh, why am I not super, super rich? Uh, we got asked this question. I think it's just a very common misconception. Uh, trying to compare someone like Warren Buffett, who's again, viewed as one of the greatest investors of all time, no question about it, right? Uh, in comparison to just your average day trader, right? Someone that, you know, according to Warren Buffett, being able to make, you know, 10 to 15% on average a year, uh, and someone saying that, hey, I can make either, you know, 20% a month, right? Or 100% on the overall year. A lot of people begin to question, well, how can the greatest investor of all time only on average make 20% a year in comparison to someone like yourself. Uh, you know, an average Joe might be able to make more than that a year. And uh, the easiest thing I can just kind of say to that is there's a big difference from an investor and a trader, right? Uh, so like an example, as of today alone, I cleared a little bit over $4,000. And one of the things that I wanted to share with you guys is, first of all, I have my focus, I have my niche. It's not something that I ever encourage, especially a beginner trader to try to focus on. I trade a lot of um, you know, ETFs uh, and ETNs such as you know, UGAS and DGAS that follow the overall commodity of natural gas. They come at a greater form of risk. I know that they're not for everyone. And this is something that you have to get through your head just because something works for someone doesn't mean that it has to work for the masses my goal for everyone I mean the reason that we run the largest YouTube channel in the world right 815,000 subscribers the reason that we run the largest Facebook group in the world uh, 276,000 members is not because we try to encourage everyone to be little minis of, of me it's, it's not that at all it's the overall idea of you know working towards being the best version of yourself, being able to be empowered to find your own niche. And why, if I make or aim for 1% a day, uh, do I not have a gajillion dollars in my trading account? Um, and I'm trying to just be very lighthearted, so again, don't get super upset, is because a goal is something to work towards, not something that you have to hit every single day. It's as simple as that. I experience red days, and if you're part of Learn, Plan, Profit, if you watch my live trading sessions, I'm one of the only people, I'm one of few people now uh, that trade live every single day. And like we've said before, a goal is something that someone can work towards, but we're human, we make mistakes. And on Thursday and on Friday, I took two red days. So yeah, I might try to work towards making 1% or 1.5% a day. It doesn't mean that I have to achieve it, right? There's people that aim for 5%, 10% a day that maybe have a much more aggressive approach when it comes down to trading. The goal is, again, you just have to make sure that you do your part in overall risk management. And today alone, I cleared a little bit over uh, $4,300. So now I'm over the $100,000 mark. I was over 100,000 on Wednesday. And unfortunately, two days followed. Uh, it looks like actually natural gas is pushing up right now. Uh, so what I wanted to kind of just explain, I wanted to break down why if someone you know, tries to make 1% a day. Why is it that maybe they don't have a gajillion dollars? And how is it that Warren Buffett is still viewed as a greater investor in comparison to your average day trader? You know, first of all, I'm not an investor. I'm a day trader, right? Uh, we focus on higher forms of risk. Uh, this is something that's very clearly explained. Uh, just because something is difficult doesn't mean that it's impossible. This is something that we all have to get through our head, right? One of the examples, uh, I'm gonna be withdrawing my money right now, uh, paying myself back. Uh, I like to pay myself back towards the end of the month, back to 50,000. I let this month run a little bit longer. Uh, I'm almost at two months. I just wanted to see if I can hit 100,000. Uh, so I'm gonna pay myself, I'm gonna do $51,666.55. I don't like that number. Uh, I'm gonna click continue. Click submit right here. All right, and here we have it. We are now back to $51,666.55 is what I withdrew back to personal bank account, and this should put me back at 50,000. So let's go ahead and see if we can get it right back to that. So, oh, it looks like I lost 50% of my trading account. That is hilarious. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I wanted to answer this in the most lighthearted way is one of the first things that you need to understand is people are so opinionated when they see anyone find any form of success in areas that they lack in or that they failed in is they'll come up with any excuse on why they might have made it, but you know, they did it, or maybe it's impossible, right? Well, when it comes down to trading, just because something is difficult doesn't mean that it's impossible. And this is something that you just have to get through your head. One of the examples that I can give you is I like trading ETFs and trust me, 
I know in comparison to a very, very conservative investor, that could be viewed as complete nonsense and, and super high risk. Just like, you know, some people like trading uh, momentum stocks or stocks that are aggressively pushing up. I don't know if you guys have paid attention to Nikola. Nikola is up over 65% on the day. It's been a trending stock and ever since it's, uh, I don't want to say IPO'd, but since it's done its merger, we can do this five day analysis. Uh, we can see that it hit lows of $31, right? $31 all the way to highs of $61. It's almost 100% return, right? We have American Airlines. I mean, even with Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett sold his position, right? American Airlines was at trading at $10 and it hit highs of $22, over 100% return. We have companies like HTZ, right? Uh, a company that filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. This is a car rental company, right? And then it found a support at 76 cents and it's been pushing up ever since, hit highs of $6.25 today, 600% return. Difficult doesn't mean impossible. One of the things that I wanna also share with you is I would not, I would not, I'm not, someone myself that is conditioned to trade HTZ. That is someone that wants to trade, you know, Nikola. I'm not someone that tries to pursue, my, my mission every single day is not to try to find momentum stocks. It's not to try to find pump and dumps. It's not to try to find penny stocks, nothing against those. All I'm saying is I have my own style of trading. The, the, the idea of trying to obsess that there is just one perfect way in doing everything. There's not. There's many different ways to approach the same market to still get that same end result. I focus on ETFs. Someone can focus on investing. Someone can focus on pumping ups. Someone can focus on momentum stocks. And guess what? All of them can still be different versions of being profitable. It's, it's so mind-boggling how people are so closed-minded on the idea that there's only one perfect way to success. It's why is entrepreneurship so difficult? Because everyone is challenged with new obstacles every single day. And trading is no exception. It is very difficult. It is very challenging. But difficult doesn't mean impossible. It does take a lot of hard work. You are going to make a lot of mistakes. Risk management is key. Defense is key in this market, especially as you day trade, because there is a greater form of risk. But over time, and as you become more conditioned, just as a perfect example, you know, when I experienced those two red days in a row, right? Last uh, last week, uh, I had those uh, two red days where I hit 100,000 and then I had two red days where I lost like 1.1K and 1.2K. Um, you know, they suck. Uh, it, it sucks to have a red day. But one of the things that you have to make sense of is, well, today, you know, I had a $4,000 day. So you're going to tell me that you are so closed-minded that you're like, well, I want to make money in the market, but I never want to lose money. That's just not how this market works. That's a job. That's a nine to five. You know, you input a direct amount of time and hours and you get a direct output of pay. Very low risk or minimal risk. Good outpay. Nothing wrong with that. This is a little bit different. It is your job to manage your risk. So yes, having a goal of 1%, having a goal of 5%, having a goal of 0.05% a day. A goal is something to work towards every single day. A goal is something that you wanna find both challenging, but not so challenging that you end up, you know, ignoring some of your criteria or best practices to try to achieve that goal. It, it's kind of this middle ground. And when it comes down to experiencing these $1,000 red days that I've had before, but having these, you know, $4,000 green days, the thing that we have to understand is, you know, you should only take advantage of opportunities that you are conditioned to. Don't trade with a dollar amount that you are not ready to just because you have money. That, that, that just doesn't make sense, right? You need to understand that when it comes down to being successful in any market, it takes time to learn. And once you get through that kind of learning curve and things begin to make a little bit more sense, you begin to understand the overall value of building that foundation of values in which you can build off of to become self-sufficient, right? Just like I wake up every single morning, I'm not asking anyone, hey, what should I trade? Where should I buy? And where should I sell? Does it mean that I have a crystal ball? No, it just means that I have a general understanding of what it is that I'm doing and what I'm looking for. And that's the goal to work towards, to have your own version of my natural gas, you gas and degas, so you can become self-sufficient. So yes, it is difficult to be successful in the market. And yes, it did take a lot of time to get to where it is that I am today. And yes, I did experience red days day after day after day, and it was a struggle, it was challenging. But let me tell you, it is one of the most rewarding parts of my life when it comes down to 
having green days like this where I literally make in just a couple of hours of trading of what it literally took me a month to make when I was working at Verizon Wireless in my telecommunication sales-based job. I enjoyed both. I just have been and got conditioned enough to where I was able to scale to $100,000. And the last thing that I want to um, answer with in this video is people love to ask, well, Ricky, if you're doing so well day trading with $100,000, why don't you compound this money? Why don't you continue to scale it to a million, to 10 million, to 100 million? Because like you saw on Thursday and Friday, I tend to, based off of how I'm conditioned, if I lose $500, if I lose $1,000, that doesn't affect me as much because of how I'm conditioned. That might be like for a beginner losing five or $10, right? Um, I'm just well-versed enough that I understand it's part of the game. If I begin to lose 5,000, 10,000, $20,000 in a day, you know, I'm not conditioned enough to get to that point just yet. So I am scaling at my own pace because I understand that what I trade does come at a greater form of risk. There's nothing wrong with that. Some people scale quicker than others, and that's great. People are entitled to their own opinion. But at the end of the day, please never trade with more than you are conditioned to, that you are ready to trade with. That's my biggest piece of advice. It's, it doesn't matter how opinionated someone might be about what you should or should not do. It is your job to only take advantage of opportunities that simply make sense to you. If you are not ready, then continue to paper trade, continue to simulation trade and practice on and focus on learning. When you are ready and when that time comes, scale at your own pace. Because again, just like we had all the all the haters, right? All, all the doubters of, or people just not understanding of why I was pursuing the stock market at such an early age. You know, having days like this, right? When I'm up a little bit over $4,000, when I clear a little bit over $100,000 in my trading account, I pay myself, you know, a decent dollar amount. Uh, when it comes down to running the largest YouTube channel in the world, 815,000 subscribers, uh, running the largest Facebook group for those who day trade in the stock market. I meant the largest uh, YouTube channel for those who day trade by, uh, by all means. Uh, and then 277,000 members. We run the largest Facebook group in the world for those who day trade in the stock market. And guess what? It's people can continue to talk. They can continue to say whatever it is that they want to say. I will continue to do my part in making my money and skill at my own pace because it makes sense to me, not because their opinions mean anything to me. Because just like their opinions and themselves, they're completely irrelevant to the overall situation and big picture, right? Focus and work with people that empower you and embrace you to be the best version of yourself, not people that try to judge you by you trying to learn more about different markets that you personally see value in. And that's what I really wanna leave you guys with. So I really hope that I earned your thumbs up in this video. If you guys have any questions, drop them down in the comment section. Feel free to share this video with someone that you think that will value it. And also don't forget to stay connected. Like we said, we do run the largest Facebook group in the world for those who day trade in the stock market. And that's gonna be that first link down below. And also don't forget to subscribe. Like always team, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take it easy.